Welcome to the Angular ecosystem. This video is going to be your quick guide on some of the top sites, tools, and resources that will introduce you to the Angular ecosystem. Hello, my name is Stephen Fluin, and today on Demos with Angular, we're going to be taking a look at some of the top tools, sites, and resources that are available to you as part of the Angular ecosystem beyond just the technology that the Angular team is building. Let's dive in. All right, so I've got a ton of resources I want to go through today because there's just so many things out there that you can take advantage of as an Angular developer. But I'm going to split this up into three sections. And if you're looking for the list of all these resources that I'm talking about, uh, check out the attached blog post in the description. So the first set of sites that I want to point out are really great starting points. So a lot of these actually come from the Angular team. So first and foremost, we have Angular.io. This is the official site for Angular. It's got a ton of the documentation, a ton of the resources. If you just click on Docs, you're going to see all the different guides, all the different techniques. If you want to come and read reference materials, learn how to use certain things like PWAs, service-side rendering, all those sorts of things, Angular.io is definitely the place to start. And one site, and one part of the site in particular that I want to call out, is Angular.io slash start. So you'll also see this called the triant section of the site. What this does is this actually gives you a getting started tutorial that really focuses on not teaching you everything day one. So it takes the idea of let's build a simple e-commerce store and not actually go into all of the concepts, all the theory behind how an Angular app works, not even require you to install Node or the CLI or anything like that. Just try to get you started fast, focus on the most important things in Angular, such as the templates, such as navigation, such as data flowing through your application, and so on. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more feature rich, you should take a look at the Tour of Heroes tutorial. This is one that's been around for a long time and developers have loved this, but it goes a little bit deeper into the theory and concepts behind a lot of how some of these things work in terms of how would a master detail view look? What should the module layout of my application look like? All those sorts of really important concepts that come a little bit later. The Tour of Heroes tutorial can really help you understand and master a lot of those concepts. The Last piece of the uh, Angular site that I want to point out is angular.io slash resources. This is a really, really great list that is primarily led by community PR. So when people submit themselves into this list, we review them and make sure that they are high quality. And so we have a really great list of IDEs, tooling, libraries, all the things that you might actually want to add into your Angular application to extend it to make it even better. A little bit off of the beaten path now of the actual Angular.io website, we have the Angular blog. So on blog Angular.io, this is actually the primarily uh, the primary communication channel from the Angular team about things that are going on. So you're going to see major version releases. You're going to see case studies of how people are using Angular and how it's affecting them. You're going to see news and announcements from the Angular team. And so blog Angular.io is definitely a site that is worth subscribing to and paying a lot of attention to. And the last site that I actually want to point out is actually the CDK. So the CDK is this really, really great site for the component dev kit where the Angular team has taken a lot of the best practices that they have around building components and they've externalized all those capabilities, all those behaviors as tools that you can add into your Angular application. So if you're building reusable components, you definitely want to take a look at the CDK in terms of accessibility, clipboard, bidirectionality, all these kind of things that you want to do as a developer, the CDK is abstracting some of those and giving them to you in a way that looks and feels a little bit like you're building an Angular application. So those were the getting started points that I wanted to point out. But all of these coming from the Angular team, there's actually a lot of really important tools and really essential tools that don't come from the Angular team. And so I want to point out some of the top places that you should be looking for Angular information that are not actually coming from the Angular team. So first up, we're going to take a look at Stack Overflow. So there is a very, very active tag. If you just look for Angular on Stack Overflow, you're going to find lots of really great questions. Uh, it's a great place to get support, work with a community, and really kind of connect to a lot of folks that are out there trying to help others as they build Angular applications. Another place to look would be the Angular issue tracker. So if you take a look at github.com slash angular slash angular, you're going to find the Angular GitHub issue tracker. Um, and this is where the team basically tracks all of the bugs, all the problems, and even now some of the RFCs. So things that the team wants to change or is thinking about changes and they want feedback on. So if you're having an issue uh, that is not necessarily a support issue, but more like a bug or a feature request, the angular.io issue tracker, excuse me, the GitHub issue tracker for the Angular repo is definitely the place to go. This is where the team is spending a huge amount of time right now because they want more people to uh, 
be contributing and getting value out of this sort of interaction. One of the specific sites I'll actually point you to before we move on is if you click new issue, it, there's this really nice uh, chooser, which I'm not able to go to because I'm not logged in right now, but it actually walks you through this process and says, hey, if you have a pull request, here's the template you should use. If you have an issue, here's the template you should use. And if you need support, maybe don't log that here. Maybe there's some other places that might be a little bit better for you. The next site I want to point out is rxjs.dev. So this is actually the official site for rxjs. So rxjs is used a lot within Angular. And if you end up trying to understand observables a little bit better, you want to understand what is a subject, what it, how do these flows, how do the operators work, rxjs.dev is the place to look. And one thing in particular that I like to call it is this operator decision tree, where you say in kind of very simple language what you want and what you're trying to create and how you're trying to flow data through your application and then it gives you recommendations about what you should do. So you can just kind of go through here, you can try some things, and you can see what sort of operator you should take a look at, and then you can click directly into the documentation for that operator. Next up is MDN, or the Mozilla Developer Network Web Docs. So this is a fantastic site from the folks over at Mozilla that goes through almost all of the APIs that exist on the web. So whether this is implemented in Firefox, Chrome, Safari, doesn't matter. If you look for a feature and a capability, you're definitely going to find it here. So there's all sorts of really great things like you can look about like what's on click and then you can understand what on click is and when it's an attribute and what it can be applied to, what does that actually mean? You can look for low level APIs, like let's say get user media. Right? That's a really, really popular API. And not only do they cover the specific API with all the implementation, uh, but they also cover kind of when it's up to date, when is it the latest, and what are the recommendations. So there's lots of like really, really good information on MBN because a lot of building Angular applications is not just using Angular APIs, but it's using the web and trying to use the best of the web. And so I, whenever I find MDN in like a Google web search, I know it's going to be good. Next up is the Angular GDE list. So if you take a look on the directory and you search for Angular down here, you're going to see this big giant map. And so this is a map of all of the experts around the globe that have been certified as having an understanding and impact in the Angular ecosystem. And so you can kind of say, hey, I live in this part of the US or this part of Europe or Asia. And you can kind of look around and say, who are the experts near me? And who could I reach out to and actually understand Maybe I want to go see them speak. Maybe I want to invite them to one of my events or something like that. There's so many things you can do with these experts because they, they're all part of the community, they're part of the ecosystem, and they're all trying to give back, which is really, really amazing. There's also a ton of meetups. I think that meeting with other developers in person is a huge part of really sharing your passion and growing as an engineer. And so there's hundreds and hundreds of groups that you can find on meetup.com. There's also a repository from Maxim Salnikov where he's brought together a bunch of resources for people that want to organize content around Angular. And so whenever I'm traveling, I basically just search for like, let's say I'm going to uh, Japan. I say Japan Angular or, or NG Japan, and you're gonna find events, you're gonna find meetups, you're gonna find conferences that are going to be in that place and connect you to other developers in person. Uh, again, this is a little bit different because right now we've got the COVID situation, so obviously no one's really traveling, but it's a really great time to connect people that are around you. And even if you aren't traveling, even if you're not going to in-person events, a lot of these meetups and a lot of these groups are putting on online content right now. Another site I would want to point out are related to conferences. So there are two major conferences that the Angular team attends in force each year. The first one is ng-conf, and that happens generally in the spring, so around April or May. And then there's Angular Connect, which happens in London in the fall. So ng-conf is in Utah, and then uh, Angular Connect is in the fall. These are both really, really great events where the team shares some of the latest and greatest from the uh, development and from the engineering side of things, from the community. Really, if you want to stay up to date with Angular or you want to connect to the community for the first time in person, go to one of these events. Angular, both Angular Connect and NGConf are fantastic events. If you are relatively more junior, you're looking to grow your skill set in Angular, I recommend you check out NG Girls. They run in person and online workshops all over the world. So if you're at an uh, ng-conf or angular connect event there's probably going to be an ng girls workshop there supporting developers that are, are trying to grow and learn and they have a really really good model uh, leveraging extensive mentorship and really trying to build that community of support for folks i also want to point out a really great open source tool called nx so it is a command line tool but it's also a lot more 
what basically they've done is they've taken the Angular CLI and they've extended it in a lot of different ways and they make enterprise style development easier. So if you're trying to build an application that you want to be maintainable for the future and high quality and have fast builds and nice isolation, all of these kind of things that enterprise and large teams expect, NX is gonna set you up on the right path to get started with. There is a fantastic web-based IDE called StackBlitz out there, so you can check it out either stackblitz.com or you can just go to stackblitz.com slash github slash and then the whatever GitHub repository you want. And you can either start with a blank project or as I said, check out a GitHub repository and you can immediately kind of dive in here and say, what happens if I make this change to my project? And you can see it live, everything recompiles, it's all very fast. And they even have a ton of really cool features like if you sign in, you can fork and you can actually commit back to your repository from the web-based IDE. You can deploy to Firebase, all those sorts of really, really cool features. All right, the final section I wanna to move to is component libraries. So there are more component libraries than I can call out right now, but I wanted to call out some of the biggest out there. So first up is Angular Material. It actually comes from the Angular, uh, the Angular team. And the thing to know here is that it is not intended to be the one component library for everybody. The Angular Material project is really designed to be a great manifestation of the, Angular, the Google's material design philosophy as a Angular component library, showing off all the best practices of what you can do when you build a component library with Angular. And so if you like the material design aesthetic, Angular Material is definitely the one that you should take a look at, but there's lots more that are taking advantage of the same sorts of principles that Angular Material uses. Another component library I like to call it is Ionic. So the magic about Ionic is that they're really focused on mobile use cases. And so if you want a experience that adapts to the type of device that your user is using, Ionic has those sorts of capabilities. And they even have a secondary project called Capacitor that allows you to access mobile APIs and get your web application using web technologies into the app stores, which is a really, really cool use case and it's very, very popular. I also want to call it Bootstrap. Bootstrap is a really, really popular design system now at this point, which started as more of just kind of a simple JavaScript CSS framework. But there's, if you like that design aesthetic and if you like that API and the way of thinking, there's a couple tools, ng Bootstrap and ngx Bootstrap, that manifest the Bootstrap system and the Bootstrap platform as Angular components in a really, really nice way. Next up is Clarity. So this is the VMware design system. I love this story because basically what they did is they took their internal design system and they said, let's make it open source. And then they, they got all these kind of secondary benefits of being able to create cohesive experiences for their users, whether software is being built by their team or by other teams in the company or even vendors and things like that. And so if you uh, want to take a look, they've got a lot of different components. They've got a really, really sound way of thinking about their components and the research that they've done into their design system. So it's one of the ones that I definitely recommend you check out. Another very popular one is PrimeNG. So it is a library that has a ton of different components. You can just take a look at the list of components. You can see kind of all the manifested. You can see all the options and capabilities. They have a ton of kind of different features that you can take advantage of. Like, so it's not just a drop down, it can be a drop down with search, all that and more. Next up, I'll call out Kendo from the company Progress. This is a paid component library, and I know that's not for everyone, but if you are interested in a paid component library that has a support model, this is definitely one of the ones to look at. And the other one that I would call out would be Indigo Design. One of the things I'd call out about indigo.design is that you can actually start with a set of templates as part of the design system, kind of drag and drop in Sketch these different components, and then you can upload that into their system and it'll do code generation where you actually get these original components that the designer chose manifesting itself as a component, manifesting itself as a actual functional piece of code that you can go and actually use. Thank you so much for watching this Welcome to the Angular Ecosystem video. I know that I've left out a ton of really great sites, tools, and resources. Feel free to comment down below to let me and let others know the other things that didn't make this list. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.